am Hema Bharti Parni, um, working in art gallery as a performing artist, rehearsal director, and also senior um, uh, consultant. And um, I started dancing um, from the age of five. And then professionally, I started performing at the age of 10, Kuchipudi mainly. And then um, as usual, like every girl has to learn classical dance and uh, every boy has to learn some kind of uh, martial arts or sports. Um, as an Indian um, girl, that's how I was brought up. Um, dance was not my first love at all <laughs> from my childhood. I always wanted to be a little bit like a tomboy, <laughs> uh, more interested in sports, mainly uh, athletics. Running is one of my favorite um, thing in my life more than a dance. Um, I think um, I, when I started doing classical form, like Kuchipudi and Bharatnatyam, I was learning and I was performing because my mom wanted me to do, as simple as that. Um, I think um, in 2000, I joined in Atta um, There was an audition and then my dad forced me <laughs> to come. <laughs> I was, I don't want it to come. Um, many reasons. One is about, I have to speak in English to everybody here. Um, also because it's a contemporary um, dance world. The common language was English. If you don't know English, you can't speak to anybody. You can't communicate any with anyone. So. I used to be more frustrated. First of all, I don't like dance, <laughs> and then contemporary dance, and then <laughs> I have to talk in English. But over a period of time, what I learned is the thing, it's not about what you like or what you dislike. It's about the journey makes you understand about, through dance, I came to know about my identity, through dance, I came to know about myself. Through dance, a lot of hidden secret was came to know about myself. Um, I think more than an academic education, I think I have, dance has taught me an education. So I feel um, very um, humbled, very kind about how come this dance has come to me. Um, so that's my entry about uh, dance. Um, as I said, interestingly, my mom always wanted me to become a Bharatnatyam dancer or an Indian classical form dancer. And my dad always wanted me to be a contemporary dancer. Um, he never liked it classical. And uh, until today, my mom has not seen my contemporary performance. So it's interesting how my, both the parents are contrast. It complemented each other in different age and different situation in my dance life. Um, I think when I joined Articulary, they said you have to do anything and everything which is related to dance. That's what I realized contemporary dance has given given me such a larger canvas. It's a huge canvas. Um, I felt classical form, it's a golden frame which has a limited border. Like you have to play within the ground. So you have freedom to run around wherever you want, but I think you have to have within the, uh, inside the game if you want to be, you have to be inside the boundaries. Uh, but I felt Contemporary is much more like a like a map. The more you want to explore, the more you want to um, 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 find out, like digging miles. The more you dig, the more you get it. So um, definitely, articulary supported for dance. 
it's not for imposing for classical dance or for contemporary dance it's about the body it's for the movement that's why articulate is into for movement arts it's the it's supported for the movement of the body so i started performing also more kuchipudi solo mainly um and then anything and everything my work is about what you see i'm an indian i'm a female artist as simple as that my work is and um i found that language i found strength in me not to say that i can't say that i'm not an indian i can't say that um oh i'm not going to do anything about classical dance because i've trained so many years i don't want that to touch uh instead of saying that i started accepting everything to go more deeper because indian classical form has so much contemporized uh, elements contemporized approach um like our folk traditions it's like keep evolving and evolving and evolving the more you want to interpret the same story in different ways so i felt it's more contemporized actually classical dances so uh, all my work is about take the micro and make it as a macro take it as a simple concept or a, a mythological story about a small women or what whatever it is and then amplify it like a elaborate it so definitely articulary nurtured my past and also my future and uh, to know what is the present they put me um, in the different challenging situation so definitely articulary has been supporting um, has nurtured me as an artist um in one word if i have to tell what is my work is about the first is what you see me it's something to do about indian elements and then female this is is there in everything every single my work and then the actual what do you say the headlines or the slogan of my work is unfinished hidden secrets it's about autobiography um every single piece is about a situation as something has happened to me a things which i never do in my daily life as a woman as an indian female um i feel freedom in to do it on stage um so that's that's in a way that's what i found like a like a like a freedom to put it on stage through my piece um so it's about autobiography unfinished hidden secrets if you go for everything sweet then it will become bitter <laughs> if you go if you eat bitter god a lot like uh, at the end of the tip is a sweet so um, what you go for it's not that at the end so i think um, you need to have a challenging things you need to have that deeper depth otherwise you are in shallow you're trying to what for what for what sake you're trying to hide it um so for example my first piece i created in 2003 it was about uh, child sexual abuse um a book by pinky virani called uh, bitter chocolate so it's inspired by that and also uh, the name of the piece called chaya means shadows so it's not about one story it's about more than 250 real stories has been written in that book so and that's my first book <laughs> as a as an acad academical other than book that's the first thing i started putting myself as i told in the beginning um initially i was struggling a lot to speak in english and then all of a sudden i have to read a book about child sexual abuse it's it's a big thing Uh, what i did was i started interviewing because i can hear the language i can see the video i can understand better i did a live video uh, for a lot of people interviews and interviews and interviews through this interviews i started drawing whatever the image is strong from one story like uh, one of the story was very strong just stuck in my head 
a child, whenever it sees a white shoes, it gets shaky and then it used to get upset. And then, um, so later parents found that uh, the mother was raped by his own uncle uh, while the, this child is in the womb. So it has been affected from the womb. And um, one of the other child is, uh, the child doesn't remember anything. A guy who abused was wearing a white shoes. So as a height, as a small kid, it can see only the shoes. Nothing else, the world, it doesn't remember the face much. So it's about the body memory. What I felt was, as I said, anything, everything to do about classical dance or India or this thing, as my memory is, my first question when I started learning contemporary dance was, I can explain somebody who knows Bharatanatyam, this is Katakamuka, this is Alapadmaka. So there is a name, precise name for the gesture. Of course, there is a different interpretation about each uh, um, um, gesture. That's not the point. It's about how am I going to explain somebody this in, in, in a contemporary context. So my question was a body memory, what we keep mastering or this thing in classical dance, it becomes so evident, we think everybody knows it. So we started believing, okay, if I do both the hands in Tripataka, okay, everybody should know this is Vishnu. It's not true. A common people or a non-Bharatnatyam dancers, they wouldn't know this is Vishnu. Unfortunately, all my work has been promoted or performed outside the India. Uh, very less in India. <laughs> um, um, the requirements, the basic requirements is too complicated. Um, like an application when I apply. So there are so many questions I have to answer. Not that I haven't applied for any competition in India. A lot of uh, competitions and festivals I applied. A lot of rejection has been done. So I, I think why? That's also is a kind of question. My work is about India. My work is about uh, female. And um, recently I was performing in Korea and one of the producer came into me. She grabbed my hand. She said, you know what? You should perform more in India, your piece, she said. I was shocked by it. A, she doesn't know that whether I've performed more in India or not. She was so strongly, you should, you should perform more in India. She didn't even ask me question, have you performed more in <laughs> India or not? Like, um, it really striked me when she said that, wow, that's something which is a very deep question which I've been asking myself. Um, and also I have asked a lot of my non-Indian friends, why, you know, like it really bugs me. Why, why do you take my work? Like a lot of people, they come and say, do you want to perform? I was like, why me? I get, you know, like, <laughs> why? There are so many other works in India and so many other uh, people are doing. Why do you want to take my work? So, you know, like I really want to find out. Um, the answer is simple. It's, it's about, it's abstract enough to have a clarity. <laughs> Um, as I said, uh, from 2000, I started working in Atakalari. Um, I've always been uh, believed that you need to go deep enough to understand one language because one language is not enough. So I feel just to understand Atakalari itself is, is a huge, big ocean. Um, I've always been asking myself I never wanted to leave Bangalore, for example. If I detach from India or from Bangalore, I feel the authenticity, what I'm trying to do. I always like to bring work to Atakalari or bring work to my city because my city, Atakalari, has given me so much. I always think how to return back that uh, courtesy to you know to give back something and as an artist this is what you want you travel internationally you do your own work Atakalari supports for the upcoming artists like me who nurtured who gives a floor it's just to get a studios like this is a this is what every single dancer wants it you know space to rehearse 
space and lights or any single small support is is that's what we want and i am getting everything plus i'm teaching i've been taught by it i'm performing and perform with articulary like we travel internationally um it's it's very rare especially in india we have like this um when i started uh doing or learning contemporary dance in articulary we were only few people five or six maximum for almost for two years when we say contemporary dance i'm going to i'm learning contemporary dance and people are like what is that what does it mean so means is i was also very young not able to express it what is it um it's a dance that's all i <laughs> that's all i used to know um that's also people also used to know but now the minute i say articulary or contemporary dance oh okay 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 yeah yeah we know we have seen at least a common people or dancer or non dancer they at least understand what is contemporary dance i mean at least they know this is a form you know like it's in india definitely it's been evolving and evolving it's it's not our it's not our language it's not our first language so and even in the schools whether it's a performance for the school day it's every dance starts from school for any child or in the college competition or professionally company those are the levels they never used to have any competition or any category of contemporary dance they used to be classical bollywood so group or solo and then over period of time there was a solo contemporary piece not even a group piece and then now classical contemporary <laughs> <laughs> solo or a group it it has become that evolution maybe because what is dance it all starts from tv or from your house from your house definitely the dance now become a phone for everybody for a child for a dancer now the dance is from the phone um um like social media everything and then all this reality shows had a big effect on dance whether it's a quality wise in one hand it's how much there is always good and bad there's nothing only good there's nothing only bad um equally they complement each other um so i think this reality show had a big impact on children on parents and then dances there's a one aspect of commercial dance which is also known as a contemporary dances i feel the main the deeper work what you called the aesthetics there are different aesthetics which can be a commercial work that's also nice that's also gives you a kind of pleasure immense pleasure um another one is more deeper more artistic work which i think um um i prefer artistic work um because it's my choice um we start together we finish together whatever the times are different doesn't matter i think that's that's that really stayed back back of my mind always um that's what i like about contemporary dance it's like it's about it gives you more and more kind of it's endless learning never stops the more you want to learn it's like a big ocean you'll be swimming and swimming you can go around the world yes thank you so much